Hi, Ray. Hi, Maria. How are you? Very good. Thanks for agreeing to do this interview with me. Absolutely. I think it was really important um, what we learned from ranked choice voting, so I'm happy to do it. So what I would like to ask you is, um, what were your thoughts about ranked choice voting before uh, before you met me, before I did that presentation at the, at the Hispanic Chamber? Well, you don't have to tell you that it weren't very positive. Um, you know, I'm a campaign guy. I was uh, fortunate to work for the Obama campaign in 2008 and run a field office. And then I was even more fortunate to actually uh, be the state director for the 2012 re-election. And so um, I learned a lot about campaigns. And so one of the things that really worried me was that when this idea of ranked choice voting came out is how can you game the system? How can you use ranked choice voting to get um, outcomes that um, benefit candidates and not benefit people? And so I have to tell you, I was really skeptical about this. And um, you know, not understanding it fully, I actually came out against it as a pretty advocate of saying, you know, I don't think we should do this. We need to think about it more. We need to study it. And how can you game the system? And um, after, you know, your presentation, it was amazing because it was almost like this light flip. It switched, just kind of flipped in my head. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I, in my head, I was going through all these computations. Of, okay, how can I game it this way? Or how can I do it this way? How can I sway it this way? And every time I hit a roadblock, I couldn't, I couldn't actually do that. And so the more and more that I learned about ranked choice voting, the more and more I was impressed that it actually allows for more, a more democratic process and more of the will of the people to actually have uh, an input in the outcome of an election. And what did you do once you figured that out? Well, I, so I will tell you that I was kind of like, I was still upset because I was, I was completely wrong. I was 180% wrong about this. So I went, I left from that, and I took it back, and I kind of, I, I asked some people, and I asked them, you know, some kind of Socratic questions to see if I could figure out if they could game the system. And, and then I thought about it some more, and then I actually wrote it down, and I kind of, I drew little lines, and I did this little chart, and I was like, okay, this really works. And so what really impressed me about ranked choice voting is that, you know, sometimes that you will have, for instance, you know, a progressive candidate, right? You'll have two or three progressive candidates and, and someone that's maybe a little bit more conservative. And what happens is that those three progressive candidates will split the vote, and then the actual, the conservative will actually win. Well, if you think about majority rules, the majority voted for a certain philosophy or a certain ideology of political leadership, and yet they got something else because of our traditional um, way that we elect people. In ranked choice voting, what this allowed you to do is this allowed the will of the people, the way they wanted to be led, where the direction that they wanted to be led to actually come out independent of where those candidates lined up. And so I became a huge advocate of this. And uh, I remember that I invited you back to the Hispanic Chamber so that way you could do some education. And then every time that I could, I would go out and really sing the praises of what ranked choice voting was. And then to see how it worked out in our own Santa Fe municipal elections, I'm a true believer. I think this is the best way to go. Um, it saves uh, governments money on not having to run runoff re-elections. And again, the most important thing is that in a democracy, it should be the will of the majority and ranked choice voting allows that to actually happen. So what, what do you think was the effect of ranked choice voting, the impact of ranked choice voting on, on the city of Santa Fe, not just on election night, but sort of like throughout the campaign season? And how do you think our city has changed and perhaps benefited from it? Well, you know, of course, the, the outcome is is that we have, that the, it was a clear majority that spoke for a certain way that the city wanted to be led, right? And so that is, I think that's the most important thing is that the will of the voters is actually being implemented. So, but beyond that, there were other side benefits. And one of the interesting side benefits that I actually watched was the fact that the other candidates were much more civil to one another. And the reason was is because people could have their first choice, but they wanted to be that voter's second choice. And you know what that did? That elevated the level of debate. That elevated the level of discussion. So rather than this mudslinging back and forth, I think that we had a much more honest um, discussion about what the issues were and what the challenges were facing our community. And that level of having that kind of discussion, it lifts everybody up because now we're not just mudslinging. So I think that was an amazing, important benefit to ranked choice voting. And uh, after the election, uh, have you had any insight about how the losing candidates 
have reacted to this? You know, I have. I've talked to several of them, and so nobody nobody has sour grapes. You know, they understood what it was. The election, you know, besides um, a lot of people saying that people were going to be confused and people didn't know what they weren't going to know what they were doing, you know, a lot of people went through ranked choice voting, and those folks who didn't who wanted to vote the way they did, they only chose one person. You know, and I think that they lessened their impact on the vote, but that's their right to to, to vote as they would like to. But I, you know, I haven't heard anything negative about how the voting was selected, about ranked choice voting. Um, I think that everyone knew exactly what the stakes were and how to um, try to get their voters out and how to appeal to voters. And I think, again, I think it raised the level of discourse. And I think re people really understood that this is the way to go because you get the will of the majority. And you know, if you're going to run for public office, you need to be listening to the people to really have policies that reflect what the people want. So Mayor Weber went from 39% of the vote on the first round to 66% right. on the final round. Right. How do you think that that will change the way um, that he governs, having, you know, governing with a 39% mandate as opposed to a 66% mandate? How do you think that might affect You know, I think, uh, absolutely, I think it really does two things. One is that on the, so... Number one, it gives the leader the ability to go back and say, okay, 39% of the people voted for me the first time, right? And I think that in a democracy, it's always good to have a little bit of humility, mm -hmm. right? So that way, you know, you didn't win a majority the first time. But the second time, you want a full majority. And what that does is that gives you the ability to say, okay, this is, after people were able to think about this, I was enough people's second choice that I had a clear majority. So I need to go down this route. And I think that that really gives um, a new leader or uh, a civic leader the ability to actually push the conversation and push his agenda by going back to voters and saying, look, you approved this by this margin, and now I feel like I got to go forward uh, on implementing these certain policies. So it both helps in a humble way to know what the raw vote total was for you, but it also helps to understand that this is the, and again, it, le it becomes less about the candidate and more about the direction, mm. about the policies that people want to move forward. And, you know, and I think that the other thing it does too is if I were a newly elected person, I would look to see where those second place voters came, what candidate they were supporting, and I would take a look at what those candidates talked about during the election because why did so many people like mm -hmm. them? Because they probably had some good ideas that the people wanted implemented. And so you now can go back and kind of get some ideas from them as well to couple with your ideas to really implement the will of the people. How was your experience as a voter? It was fantastic, you know. Um, it was great because, you know, um, I know many of these uh, these candidates personally. You know, we're a very small town, so we know one, in, one another. Um, and it, it's difficult to make one decision. This time it felt like it was much easier to say, okay, this is my first choice, and if I don't like that, then this is my second choice, this is my third choice, and my fourth choice. It made voting easier. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, is that I also didn't feel like I threw away my vote because for some reason, if the person that I voted for in the first round got thrown out, I didn't lose my voice. I still had a voice because I was in the election all the way through the different rounds. And it just made me, number one, it made me contemplate my, vo my vote choices even more. Mm -hmm. So I was a more serious voter, but it was simple and it was really easy. So it enhanced my voter experience. You liked it. I loved it. I think it was fantastic. Cool. That's it. Thank you so much, That's Ray. It. You're welcome. Thank you for... Uh, I really appreciate you guys how hard it was. I know that uh, this city doesn't like to change. <laughs> and a lot of people you know, had a lot of questions about this. But I think you really proved that we can enhance our democracy and make it better. So thank you. Yes, and we're expanding it now to other places. So fantastic. Ranked choice voting. <laughs> Do it. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome.